Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's Bible verse, 1 Samuel 21, 9. Need more of God's power in your life? I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, providing practical tips on how to grow your faith through prayer. Subscribe at lifeaudio.com. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate His acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. Today's Bible verse is 1 Samuel 21, 9. The priest replied, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, is here. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you want it, take it. There is no sword here but that one. David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. When we find ourselves under attack, reminders of God's presence, provision, and protection can help quiet our fears and increase our faith. Many years ago, my husband ran a large railroad repair shop that, thanks to the unethical example set by the director before him, employed numerous dishonest and malicious workers. Some of them stole time, some were stealing equipment and selling it on eBay, and still others were pursuing unjustified lawsuits. A local lawyer soon realized that the railroad almost always felt it more economical and time efficient to settle outside of court, regardless of a case's merit or lack thereof, than to engage in a potentially lengthy and expensive legal battle. Therefore, soon this lawyer began coming to the rail yard to recruit potential plaintiffs. He would also include my husband in his lawsuit to keep the case in state court, which was more favorable towards individuals rather than federal court, which favored corporations. Although this left us feeling vulnerable and unsettled, we received comfort in reflecting upon numerous ways God had defended, protected, and provided for us in the past. No doubt David, ancient Israel's second king, received a similar reminder through the incident recorded in today's verse. If you're familiar with Old Testament history, you might remember how prior to David taking the throne, a man by the name of Saul ruled over the nation of Israel, but he did not seek to honor God. And as a result, the leading prophet of the time told Saul that he would eventually lose the kingdom and that God would replace him with someone else, a man after his own heart. That man was David, a humble shepherd boy turned warrior who, prior to his kingship, faithfully served God and Saul, successfully defending the nation against their enemies, the Philistines, only instead of responding with gratitude, Saul became murderously jealous and spent the rest of his life pursuing David with the help of the nation's army. Initially, in an attempt to keep his motives and his efforts hidden and to distance himself from his sin, Saul tried to get David killed in battle. But God protected and blessed David. And his influence with Saul's men and his popularity with the people only grew. This fueled Saul's hatred to open homicidal attack. Fearing for his life, David fled to a city called Nob. There, he sought help from a priest named Ahimelech, asking for food and a weapon with which to defend himself. Scripture tells us the priest gave David consecrated or holy bread that symbolized God's continual presence. Now, that likely reminded David of God's faithfulness to him personally, that God was with him in every moment. Then, as today's verse states, the priest gave David the sword of a Philistine warrior David had slayed with nothing but a slingshot and a stone and the mighty protective defending hand of God. Therefore, that probably reminded him of God's protection and power. 
Can you imagine what it must have felt like to hold that sword in his hands and reflect back on the day when he, as a young man, had stepped forward in faith to take on a well-armed, highly trained warrior, and then to see that warrior fall defeated and the rest of the Philistines flee? Can you imagine the assurance that gave David's anxious heart to know that the God who had not only kept him safe, but given him victory as well, when he had been obviously outmanned, outskilled, and outweaponed, would watch over him, keep him safe, and eventually give him victory over Saul as well. Now, we'll probably never hold an ancient soldier's sword in our hands or taste holy bread placed upon an ancient altar, but we can reflect upon God's past faithfulness, provision, and protection just the same. Some call this the worship of remembrance, and it's a powerful way to fight back our fears and anxiety with faith. As my therapist often says, what we focus on grows bigger. That means the more we focus on God, who he is, all he's done, and all he's promised, the greater he becomes in our minds. This, in turn, places our concerns and our lives in proper perspective, in God's faithful, loving, all-powerful hands. Let's pray. Father, you are the God of provision. You protect us. You defend us. You go before us. You watch over us. You pour your strength into us. You complete everything that concerns us. When we feel afraid, remind us of your promises. Remind us of your character and your heart towards us. And remind us of all of the ways that you have provided for us, protected us, and stayed with us in the past. May we turn to you in times of fear. May we reflect upon you moment by moment, second by second, breath by breath, redirecting our thoughts away from our fears and back to your truth, away from our fears and back to your truth, away from our fears and back to your truth. Surround us with your love and with your presence. And it is in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Venture X from Capital One is the travel card for people always asking, Where next? You earn 10x miles on hotels and rental cars and 5x miles on flights booked through Capital One Travel and 2x miles on everything else you buy with Venture X. Plus, receive premium travel benefits like access to over 1,300 airport lounges. The Venture X card from Capital One. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details.